Okay, so in this tutorial we're going to replace this sky background with a brick background. I've already set up both of these files in advance uh, to be the same size and resolution, so that is something that you want to bear in mind when you're doing um, combining two images together. And this one's a little bit different to if you've seen some of the other tutorials that we've put together. It's a lot of the same tones of blue, so it's a little bit tricky to use um, the quick selection tool or the magic wand tool and it's even a little bit tricky to be using this polygonal lasso tool that we've talked about in previous tutorials. That works with hard um, sharp edges so it's not going to be so useful here. So what we're going to do with this process is kind of work backwards. We're going to create our mask first and then fill that in as we go. So let's get started. I'm just down at the bottom here um, on our layers panel, bottom right. I'm just going to click on the make, uh, make a mask option. And you'll see here that our um, mask box has popped up. We're normally used to seeing our black and white mask already created at this point, but since we're working backwards, it is blank for now. So what we're going to do is just head over to our paintbrush on the left-hand side and making sure that this little border here is actually around your mask. You can see it does it can swap around depending on where we click. Um, if it's on our image, we're changing something on the image, the color, the tones, things like that. If it's actually on the mask, it means that we're altering the mask that we've already created or we are obviously going to work with our mask area. The other thing I want to do is make sure that my black here is to the front instead of the white and I can toggle between the two on these little arrows or just by clicking X to toggle through. So I have the black at the front and I will make sure that the top of my brush, um, paintbrush is normal, 100 and 100. And in terms of my size, I'm not going to worry about that because I will change that with the shortcuts. And hardness, I'll probably have that about 95 or 100. I do want a hard edge, not a um, quite a feathered edge. So let's click back into here. I'm changing my brush size. Is the brackets beside the P on your keyboard? Just those two brackets, smaller or larger. Okay, so what we want to do is I'm going to make a brush uh, large for now. And you'll see here that I'm actually able to click and drag around and just do this a bit quickly here and you'll see that my mask is being created down the side here just undo that just just so you can see it obviously appearing in this area and I was a bit close to one of those edges so I'll just take it easy okay so you can start on the outside but it is actually quite good to sort of do the outlines of your eye um, your image first so I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to change my brush size so it's a bit smaller what I'm going to do is actually just drag around. I'm going to do this quickly so you'll see here that my, my finish won't be as great as, um, as it should, should be. So you'll see that I was able to click once and I've just moved with my spacebar, my little hand tool, maybe up to about here. If I hold down shift, you'll see that I've been able to get a straight line. So I'll do that again. If I click once here, hold down shift on my keyboard and click again, it'll give me that a straight line. So that was how I was able to get a really nice um, straight line here. And you'll see I'll probably be doing that quite a way around. So if I just carry on a bit, click once, hold down shift. And I'm actually going to do that quite a bit. I'm not holding down shift at this point. But I do want to make my brush size a bit smaller here just to get into those edges. Hold down shift again, around the corners, like so. And I'm holding down shift at these points. Just make little selections. So I want to do this quite quickly just because um, otherwise it will be a very long tutorial. So I just made my brush size a bit larger. If for some reason I went over the image that I didn't want to or someone bumped me and I sort of went in like this, uh, you can actually just toggle to your white and it will bring back whatever you wanted to bring back in. So you can see here that some of my edges, oops, the right one in the front, some of my edges here are a little bit rough. What I can actually do is go back and toggle between the black and the white down here and refine that a little bit. So here we go, just doing this really fast. So I should have gone into that area there, you'll see, but I can refine that later on. And just for the purpose of this exercise, I'm not going to worry about it. So you can see those little areas there that I'm talking about, and that little bit there that I've just gone over. Make brush size smaller. So it is really worth knowing the, the shortcut to changing your brush size. You can see that I'm changing that quite a lot. 
otherwise you're always having to go up here and change that or clicking on your um, your right click on your button oops I'm doing it on your mouse so I'm going around here around here Maybe a little bit super rush now really fast so I would go back and fix all of that up those areas that are feathered here you'll see on the mask that is when you would probably want to change your your hardness just so you get a bit of a soft edge you'll see what I mean you get a bit of a softer edge than what we've got at the moment so around here felt really dodgy now let's just pretend this is looking really good so yeah, I think you get the idea by now would have used a space bar at that point, but I will just an undo, control or command Z. Or I could have gone to my history panel, did an undo. Space bar, super useful tool for this job. Okay, right at the end here. So all I want to do now is, so that space bar was allowing me to move around my page. Hold down space bar, get my hand tool so I can move around my page. So I've made my brush larger, so you can see here now I'm actually able to go in and delete a large portion all at once. A lot smaller when I need to get closer to the edge. So if I was doing a mock-up, just want to see how my image is working out before I spend a lot of time doing my mark, creating my mask, and you'll see here it's coming together nicely. Um, I would probably do something as rough as this just so I can get a bit of an idea how it's shaping up and then I would come back in and fix up all those edges that you'll see that I was a bit rushed on. If for example this is going to be quite small on a website or in a magazine then you can kind of use your discretion and work out where you need to spend your time but obviously if it's on a billboard or something really large you do need to make sure that um, it is as perfect as it can be. So here we go, pretty much at the end here. All we have to do is bring in our image. Almost done. Okay, right, so it's pretty much done. Obviously I'm not going to worry about those other bits. So you see how our mask is created now, and I'm just going to go to my brick image that I already have ready to go. I'm going to do a Command or Control A. Long way was select all, I'm going to do a copy, shortcuts, control or command C, head over to here and do a paste. And I've got my image on the page now and I can just change the order of my layers and my layers panel by clicking and holding my mouse and dragging down so my brick is underneath my robot. So what I would do from this point on is look at my, I've just gone into edit and um, transform, I use the shortcut here. And I'd probably have a play with maybe my um, perspective and just trying to get the same kind of perspective as um, as my robot, sort of looking up. Um, and I've just realized one area that I've left off, it's this one here. But that's okay, we can go back and still work on that. So I'd head back up to my mask, obviously not the image, but the actual mask. Let's zoom in. And I just carry on as I, were, as I was. It doesn't matter that I've got the uh, brick in the background. So I grab my paintbrush again, making sure my black is to the front, yeah, we'll just get rid of that there and you'll see the background coming in. So I'll just do this really fast as well. If it was a bit confusing having that background, you could just turn that off. And obviously that will help getting all your finer details. And just quickly refining your edge, if you double click on your mask here, you will get the chance to refine an edge. Just did this, uh, this option here and go through and change some of these settings, which I have talked about in one of our previous tutorials, so I won't go into that now, but that's also an option there. And there we go, the mask is created.